morning boys and girls hope that you are okay i pray that this morning you will know that you are special and you are grateful for another day that god has given unto you it's a new day that you have never seen before and it's enough to be thankful for and so this morning we are going to pray and i ask that you you close your eyes father in the name of jesus we thank you this morning for another day that you has given unto us thank you lord that you are faithful and you keep your promises. You are the Lord, strong and mighty. And so we bless your name for being our God. The Lord who sits on the throne. The Lord who takes care of his own. The Lord who never fails. The Lord who is king forever. And so I ask, Lord, that you will lead and you will direct your children. I ask, oh God, that you remember their parents in a very special way. And I ask, oh God, that your will will be done in their lives. And that your name will be exalted as king forever. Because you are Lord. Lord bless these boys and girls today. And help them O oh God. To be thankful for the day that you have given unto them. So many persons are not alive today. But they are witnesses. And they are alive. And they have enough to be thankful for O oh God. We are asked that you will lead and you will direct. And you will instruct them today. And we pray that your will will be done. And your name, O oh God, will be exalted. Have thine own way, O oh God. Let your will be done in their lives and their parents' life. We pray for our country. And Lord, you will have mercy upon our country. And grant unto us your peace and your joy. We pray, O oh God, that you will help us to be faithful to you. And I actually remember the Prime Minister. I remember other boys and girls across the world who are going through difficulties. Have thine own way, O oh God. We pray that whatever we do today, we'll do it in the name of Jesus. Be with us, O oh God, we pray. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to say our, our Father prayer. So let's go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day you give to us. Lead us today, direct us, give unto us, O God, your peace and your joy. For your ways are the best ways. Today, boys and girls, you are special, you are unique. Remember that there is no one out there who is like you. No one looks like you. No one has the same fingerprint. No one can do the things you do just the way you do it. Your way is the only way that it can be done when it comes to you, right? And so today, enjoy the rest of the day. Today's Bible story will be taken from Judges 4. And the topic, the, the Bible character that we'll be talking about today is Deborah. Did you ever hear about Deborah before? All right. So let's read and see what, what the Bible has to say about Deborah. Deborah was a prophet who was chosen by God to help the Israelites during a difficult time. God's people had turned away from God and their lives were very hard. They were treated cruelly by, by Jabin, Jabin, the king of Canaan. Deborah asked, Deborah's task was to rescue the Israelites and help them return to God. Deborah the, is, did everything that God asked her to do. She sent for a man called Barak and asked him to gather an army of 10,000 men to fight King Jobin, Barak was willing to do this as long as Deborah agreed to help. King Jobin's army has had 900 chariots made of iron and was led by a great general called Caesarea. But with God's help, Barak and Deborah got the better of him. They forced Caesarea, 
they forced Caesarea and his men unto, unto marshy ground where their, their chariots got stuck at in, the man, in the mud. Then they pushed his army into a narrow valley and defeated it. The Israelites were free at last. So Deborah was a woman. So God used her at a time when the children of Israel were not doing great. And so God tell her what to do and she was obedient. Remember what we say, obedience is the very best way to show that we believe doing exactly as the Lord commands, doing it happily. And so she did what she did and they won the battle and the Israelites were delivered from whatever they were going through at that time. And so today, boys and girls, I want you to know that God is able to do just what he says he will do. And I, I, today I want you to remember that you are all special to God. And be kind to one another. Remember to say to mommy, thank you mommy. Thank you daddy for all that you are doing. Be grateful. There are many persons who don't have their mother and their father. Have yourselves a good day. At this time now we'll be moving over. Can you tell me? Can you say the days of the week first? Okay, boys and girls, so let's say days of the week together. So the days of the week are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, what day was yesterday? All right, so yesterday was Thursday. So read that with me. Yesterday was Thursday. And if yesterday was Thursday, what day is today? Today is Friday. Today is Friday. Today is Friday. Friday and tomorrow will be Saturday. So let's read the sentences now. Yesterday was Thursday. Today is Friday. Tomorrow will be Saturday. Seven days make one week. Okay, boys and girls. So let's do the months of the year now. Ready? The months of the year are January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. All right. Uh, what month are we in, boys and girls? We are in the month of June. And so if yesterday June was four days old, how old is June today? All right. So today June is five days old. And we are in the year 2020. All right, boys and girls. So let's go with the counting now. Are you ready to count? We are counting from 1 to 30. Let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. All right, good, boys and girls. So let's go now. Let's say the letters in the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now this morning, I want us to make the sound of the letter O. The letter O. All right, I'm waiting on you. Every letter make a sound. The O says, the O says, so I'm waiting on you. Now I'm going to sing it and I'm going to make the sound and you will tell me if the sound you make was the correct sound. Every letter make a sound. The O says O. Oh. The O says O. Oh. The O says O. Oh. 
Every letter make a sound. The O says O, and the R says the R says. Every letter make a sound. The R says and the R says rat rat. The R says the R says ru. Every letter make a sound. The R says and the S says. The S says, every letter make a sound, the S says. All right, boys and girls, today we'll be doing a different topic. Today we'll be talking about fraction. Fraction, have you ever heard that word before, boys and girls? Fraction, all right. So today we're talking about fraction. So let's see what a fraction is, right? A fraction is a number used to show how many equal parts are there are. Let's go again. A fraction is a number used to show how many equal parts there are. So it's telling you, the fraction tells you that how many parts there are. So let's go further. When writing fractions, we put one number above with another number at the bottom with a line between the top number and the bottom number. All right, so this is it. So this is called a fraction. This is called a fraction. So the top number is, is this is the name of the top number. The top number is numerator. What is the top number? numerator say that with me the top number is called the numerator and the bottom number is called the denominator the bottom number is called what boys and girls denominator and the top number is called the numerator so the top is the numerator and the bottom is the denominator all right so the numerator tells us how many parts we are talking about so the numerator, which is one here, telling us how many parts we are talking about. And the bottom number, which is called the denominator, tells us how many parts there are together. So the top number tells you how many parts you're talking about, which is this. And the bottom number tells you how many, everything in all, how many parts, right? So once upon a time, there's a boy that has one big square. And this, this square is called a hole. So this is one big square. And one day, he had to share the square with three persons. So this one big square has to cut in three equal parts. So when you're talking about fractions, the parts will have to be cut in three equal in whatever parts but it has to be equal so the parts will have to be cut equally right so let's move over into some activities so right here we have a triangle and i tried my best boys and girls to cut it equally so let's read this so what this is saying is this is half a one over two is the half so the top one is called again boys and girls numerator and the bottom one is called the denominator so the top one is telling you how many parts you want, to, you want to take out. And the bottom one is telling you how many parts in all you have. So in this case, you have how many parts? One, two. And how many parts do we want to take out of it? Look again. The top number tells you that. All right. So how many parts do we want, boys and girls? One. So we are going to shade one part, right? So we are taking out this part to give power to our friend. So let's color it. All right. Okay. So is this right? The top number, let's read it. It says one out of two. So let's see if we take one out of two. How many parts are there first? One, two. How many parts did we take up, boys and girls? One part. So this is right. 
So we took a half of the triangle for ourselves and we have the, the, the owner for the, for the other part, uh, for the entire triangle has the other part. So it's saying that is one out of two. All right, down here now, where did, what this is saying is two third, two out of three, right? So this is saying three parts in all, and you need to take out two parts. So let's count to see if it's three parts. Three. One, two, three. Let's count again. One, two, three. Three equal parts, and you are going to take out two parts. So let's, let's take out two parts quickly. All right. All right. Two parts. So we take in the bottom part and we leave in the top part for the owner, right? So always remember that the top number, which is the numerator, tells you how many parts you should take out of the whole, right? All right, is that right? So the top one says two out of three parts. Let's see if we take out two parts. One, two. All right, and it's three parts and we take two parts, which is this. So this tell you how many parts you should take out. So let's go again. Let's go now. So now this is telling you know, that it is four parts. Four. Bottom number, which is the denominator, telling you that there are four parts. Let's see if it is right. One, two, three, four. So is that right, boys and girls? Four parts? All right. So how many parts are we going to take out of the four? Three. So let's count it. One, two, three. So let's take out the part that were given to us. This is the part that were given to us. So we are taking it out of the rest, right? All right, boys and girls. So we're cutting out three parts, right? You will get to do your own a little neater than I am doing now. And um, you will get to do it. And remember that it is saying three parts. How many parts gone already? One, two parts, right? Two parts. All right. So we still need one more part to make it to three. So let's go. Oh, oh. So we take, we took out, take out right now, um, three parts. Three from the four. Uh, is that correct? This is not perfectly done, boys and girls, but I know you will do better at home, right? You will do better at home when you are doing yours. You are not going to leave any space. You are going to take it out. Okay, so it's saying three out of four. Is this reflecting three out of four? Let's count them. One, two, three, four parts. Four parts is correct. And we have taken three parts. One, two, three. Very good boys and girls. So let's move on again. Now this one is saying four out of five. Let's see if it's five part. One, two, three, four, five. So it's five parts. So let's let you can write the number. One, two, three, four, five equal parts. Now, how many parts are we gonna take up, boys and girls? How many parts are we taking out of it, right? Okay, let's go. Four parts. One. So we'll take out these parts. One. Two parts now. So we're taking four out of three parts. Uh-huh. And we'll go to the other part. So the numbers are there so you can see how many parts, right? All right, so we should, let's see if we had four parts. One, two, three, four. So this is correct, this is saying four fifth, four out of five parts, right? All right, so we're moving on to the next one now, right, boys and girls? So the next one is saying, I can you read that one for me? Read it, and I'm coming. Five out of six parts. So let's count the parts. One, let's write it. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. So we're taking five parts out of the six parts. So let's go, boys and girls. Coiling one. So we shade out this part. And we're taking, going over to two. Two parts. Okay. And we're going over to three parts. And we're moving over to four parts. So my one would not be neat as yours. You would be doing better at home. Right? Trying, but... So we're doing... This is what we're doing. Okay. So let's count the parts now. One, two, three, four, five. So is this right? It says five out of six. So you have one part left, right? One. All right, so let's go over to this. So the top number tells you is, what is it called again, boys and girls? Numerator, and it tells you how many parts you need to take out. So that one says one. One out of two, that's a half, right? And the next one says two out of three. And the top number is called the numerator, and the bottom number is called the denominator. And this is telling that you should take two parts out of the three. Right, so that's right. Let's look again. This is saying three parts out of the four. All right, so let's one, two, three, and that's correct. And this one is saying four parts out of the five. One, two, three, four, four parts. And this one is saying five parts out of the six parts. And so one, two, three, four, five, six. And we took five out of it. Remember now, boys and girls, that a fraction is a number used to show how many equal parts there are. Now the number, now the number on the top is known as the numerator and the bottom number is known as the denominator. Now the top number tells you how many parts you should take out and the bottom number tells you how many parts are there and in a whole. So this is saying four parts right and you are taking one part of it and so the numerator tells, tells us how many parts we are taking out we are talking about bottom number which is called the denominator tells us how many parts there are all together so when you count up all the parts out of the whole when you have the whole so this is a whole triangle and you take out half of it right boys and girls remember now that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are more than a conqueror, right, boys and girls? You are special to God, and that gives you a thumbs up. You are God's chosen child. So today, have yourself a great day, and know that you can do all things.